Well, hi there. My name is Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'll be making a peekaboo critter card. And it's a peekaboo because it's going to have a hole in the front. And I'm going to be using a Gerda Steiner Designs little gopher. You can use a lot of different images in place of this. Kind of got it placed where I wanted the image to be on the inside and punched a hole in the front first and then have the folded card base on my Misty. This is the mini Misty, but you can use the big one as well. So that I could line up the stamp, get it inked up, and then when the card is open, I can stamp him right in place and my stamp will align inside the circle. So he'll peek out. Isn't he cute? And then I'm going to start my coloring. I'm going to use Inktense pencils and they are a an ink pencil, not necessarily a watercolor pencil. Derwent does make watercolor pencils as well as these ink tents, but they are different. These tend to be more permanent once they're dry, which means that if you color right next to them or color over top of them, the color shouldn't move. Some of them do a little bit, and in part of that is dependent on how thick the color is that you're putting down. But I'm going to take two different browns and just color, and I'm kind of scribbling. I mean, you can see it's really picking up the texture of the paper, so don't worry if that happens because that's going to all smooth out when we hit it with water. And that's the fun part of watercolor pencils is you can just sit here and color to your heart's extent. You can color an entire image with pencils and then take a water brush with you, go sit in the yard or sit at the beach or by the campfire and just do your watercolor painting portion. It's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna add my shadows on his little arms as well. Draw a little bit into his nose. And I didn't realize when I was using this, I had grabbed a brown pencil, so I will add more color to that. But you can see how quickly it turns into watercolor once you start using a brush with it. And I'm using a number six silver brush, one of my favorite brushes. And um, these silver brushes point really well. So even though I'm using a number six, which is a fairly large brush, I can actually get it into some of these fine details pretty easily. I'm leaving the center of the image not unpainted for this, this very moment. And I will add on some water and water that out in just a few minutes. But I want to get all the color around the outside first. I'm turning it so that my brush is pointing toward the deepest shadow parts. Because if you look at a brush, the part that's toward your hand has more water in it. And the paint or the ink, the pigment, you're picking up on the tip of the brush. So you want to leave that pointing toward the outside. I've rinsed my brush well so that I could add then just water in the center and kind of soften that color out. And now that everything is really wet, while it's still wet, I can move it around. So even though I said that it's permanent once dry, it's still not permanent because it's not yet dry. So you can still move it around. And I'm kind of tapping on the surface of it in some places. You don't even have to use brush strokes. You can just move that color around as, as that color is working its way through the pigment. So I'm going to do the same thing with his little arms and paint those in with the brush and leave his tummy a little bit blank for the moment. And if I were to drag that color down now, it would potentially bring in some of that really dark brown. So I'm going to wait until it's all done and then wet my brush with nice clean water and then pull it in and you can see that I can get a much lighter color that way if I wait until after I get the outside portions finished. So I'm adding a little bit of water to his nose to soften that out. And then after that is all dry, I decided I would go in with my black pencil and then I can go in and reaffirm some of these lines so it looks a little more like, like those are part of the drawing and the outside is drawn with a more of a brown pencil. Just creates some more contrast and more definition. And the paper is still very slightly damp right now, which is why I'm getting this really nice rich black line. If you wait till it's completely dry, it'll be a little more pencil-like, but it melts in just a little bit if the paper's a little bit wet. And of course his hole has to be a little bit darker, so it looks like it recedes down into the ground. So just color right over top of that and maybe even a little bit right along his tummy, but not as thick, not as heavy. Now I wanted to put a little bit of background in here 
So I decided to take one of the green pencils and just sketch in a hillside behind him. I wasn't sure where I was headed with this at the time, but I thought at least I want to put a little bit of color in here because it's very plain right now and don't want to leave him with no scene around him whatsoever. So I just scribbled on some paint, some of the, the intense pencil, and then move it with the brush. And here the secret in trying to move color like this and make it relatively smooth is going to be the amount of water you use. So I'm just going to keep adding water to it and making sure I break down all of that pigment in the pencil lines and pull it down. I'll add more water to my brush and drag it down further. Staying away from that black pencil line because I totally forgot I should have done that at the very very end because now I had to avoid it so that I didn't wet that black and then end up having a bunch of black all over my, my grass, which could happen. So I wanted to be careful with that. And now I'm going to drag the color out again, same deal. I wasn't positive again whether I was going to go all the way out throughout the center of the card. This is the inside of the card, remember? And I wasn't sure if I wanted to do the entire thing. Do I want to do a sky on it? A lot of times when I'm working on a card, I just wait and see what the stamps and, and the work that I'm doing so far asks me to do. And right here, I just wanted to keep softening out the bottom. And there was a little bit of green in the, the pigment that I'm pulling down. So I'm getting this very light haze of a green color. And it's also possible there was a little color in my water, but all of that still worked because I've got this really nice soft gradation coming down from the very top all the way down this hillside where my little gopher is peeking out of. So just paint that until it kind of stretches all the way down. Move a little bit of that pigment because then that's just to get rid of some of that harshness of that little green spot. And then I let all of that thoroughly dry. Then it came time to add other stuff to it. These glasses you could put either direction. I tried them right side up and upside down and upside down looked funnier to me, so I thought he was cuter that way. And then I used my Misty to stamp the sentiment and the coffee cup. Go for a coffee. And then I used my Inktense pencils to make a little blue-green coffee mug down there. Using the same idea, just color with the pencil and then add water to it and watch it wonderfully break down. And uh, didn't know coffee was a, a big thing in Gopherland. But apparently it must be, because why would anybody make a stamp about gophers and coffee if it wasn't a thing, right? So after that was dry, then I added a little bit of a brown pencil. Now, I, it was a brown-red color, and that was an, an oops on my part, but I decided to go with it since I liked everything else going on on the card. And I just added enough water to my brush and kept going with a back with a clean brush to try to stretch that out. So it did actually add a little bit of color down there that was interesting. I probably would have preferred either a brown or a green, but the reddish brown still kind of works. So that's fine by me. There are times on cards where things just don't happen the way you want them to. So the last touch I wanted to add to this was going to be glossy accents on his glasses because glossy accents is always a fun little way to add some shimmer and shine onto a card. And if you're not familiar with it, it's basically an adhesive, but I use it as an embellishment. And for the very final touch, I made the coffee look like it was a little bit hot by coloring a little bit of steam coming out of it. So there's my little peekaboo guy who is absolutely adorable. The front is just plain except for this hole and him peeking through. It's going to make somebody smile when they get this in the mail. And there's my scene on the inside. Go for a coffee. So I hope that you enjoyed this and that you will get your ink tense pencils out and do something fun with them. Here are three other videos that I have done using ink tense pencils because they are one of my favorites. And you can watch any one of those. You can hit the subscribe button if you have not yet. You can visit my blog to get more information. And there are links for all the supplies in the doobly-doo down below. So thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me and I will see you again next time. Have a really fantastic day. Go create something wonderful. Take care. Bye-bye.